this is Outnumbered. I'm Kaylee McEnany here with my co-host Emily Campagno. Also joining us, co-host of The Bottom Line on Fox Business, Dagan McDowell. Fox News contributor, Leslie Marshall. And former Republican congressman from Georgia and the host of the Doug Collins podcast, Doug Collins. We begin here. President Biden expected to leave the White House later today and head to Nantucket, where he will spend the holiday as his re-election campaign faces abysmal polling and serious concerns about his age. It's a game of how low can you go for Joe. The president posted this picture on his 81st birthday, joking about his age. Thanks for the birthday. Well wishes today, everyone. Turns out on your 146th birthday, you run out of space for candles. But no one was laughing when the White House was pressed on concerns over his age. Is there a real alarm happening behind the scenes that the president is simply too old to stake around for another four years? No, there's no alarm happening behind the scenes. Not, there, I, I can only speak sure. behind the scenes here. There's no alarm happening behind the scenes. There's alarm bells all across the Democrat Party. That's why you have pieces in the Washington Post and in the Wall Street Journal, among other places. The latest NBC poll shows the president's approval rating plummeting to just 40 percent, the lowest of his term. What's worse, his political rivals appear to be gaining ground with three GOP presidential candidates beating Biden in head-to-head -head matchups in the latest Fox News poll. The president loses to former President Trump by four points, Governor Ron DeSantis by five, and Nikki Haley by 11. Yikes. Leslie, Politico said Democrats are in two categories, either the time to chill out Democrats because they did well in the 2023 elections, or the time to freak out Democrats. Are you a chill out or freak out Democrat? <laughs> I think, my, I, I think, yeah, right. I think my family's go. watching today and saying, if mom says she's chill, that's just a lie. <laughs> but, but, exactly. I, 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 but I am, uh, or they'll call me a boomer, but I am chilled and this is why, okay? Every election is a numbers game. Even you'll agree with me on that, right? And the number I'm looking at is not the polls. And it's not just because I don't like the numbers I'm seeing, although yesterday a Harvard poll showed the president ticking up just a little bit. Things are changing. Yes, we're close to the election, but you know, a year out can be a lifetime away. The reason I'm not as concerned about the polls is I'm concerned about electoral college predictions. And so let me give you a couple of things, right? President Trump is doing better with African Americans. President Trump's like over 300 electoral wait, votes wait, 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 wait. in a lot no, of the modeling. No, no, not according to today. I checked every single forecaster. Every single, every single forecaster has Biden over the finish line. This is why. President Trump is doing better with African-Americans, but not with whites. And where he is doing better with African-Americans are not states that he needs to flip. They're not swing states. Have you checked if out you the New York Times Siena College poll of six swing states? I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about polls. I'm talking about electoral college. Remember, like in New York, even though we didn't do well, and that's really what made Democrats lose, Republicans win the House in the, in the last House election, when you have... In the state of New York, for example, even if Joe Biden, even if Republicans gain in districts at the end of the day, Joe Biden gets the state. It's the same number. It's a numbers game. That's why I'm not panicking yet. Look, I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm betting my house on this. It's going Leslie, to be a to, very to, tight race, but it would be a very tight race no matter who it is because the country to win so the electoral college. You've got to win states like Arizona, Georgia. These are states which New York Times blue Siena blue. shows which Trump is winning. Africa. But look, the president could use you as his press secretary because his press secretary lacks the enthusiasm you do. A new order from DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas is warning Border Patrol agents not to misgender illegal immigrants. Yes, you heard that right. So as we watch massive crowds of migrants cross our southern border under President Biden's watch, nearly two and a half million now, it appears the White House is prioritizing pronouns over actually fixing the border crisis or maybe even just addressing it. New DHS orders obtained by the Heritage Foundation instruct agents to, quote, ask individuals about their preferred pronouns. They suggest asking, quote, I would like to be respectful. What name and pronoun would you like me to use addressing you? Or ask, can you please confirm your pronouns or gender identity? The memo also tells agents not to use pronouns like he and she and Mr. and ma'am until they are sure of how that person would like to be addressed. Leslie. To that point, can you say with a straight face that any of these illegal 
will actually care, give the slightest iota of care about their pronouns when they are subjected to rapes and sexual assaults and violence and extreme poverty and the control that these cartels have and barely making it alive because of these cartels. And, and they think that being called by a proper pronoun, that's gonna assuage everything else. Who actually cares about this? When I first saw this, I thought you guys picked this because you knew I was here today. <laughs> <laughs> no, we would never. <laughs> Shake it up. There we yeah. go. Uh, look, uh, this one was when I was like, no, I don't think it's a priority. I do think you do you are should be respectful, and there are some people that would care who are trying to escape persecution if they're LGBTQ uh, members of you know that community in some uh, Central and uh, you know other Latin American countries. However. You know, let's give a shout out to Border Patrol who just did a fabulous job with a fentanyl bus that has stopped so many drugs from coming in and has prevented and perhaps saved many, many lives in the process. One. Two, we need to look at what immigration is. It's not just a Mayorkas. It's not just a Biden. It's not just Democrat. It's not just Republican. Because Democrats and Republicans both in Congress are to blame for the failure of this system. We have an antiquated asylum system. We have a multifaceted problem. It takes a multifaceted solution. That's just common sense, which I believe God gives all of us equally. And, you know, the, the bottom line is Congress needs to act, not just a president, but this memo doesn't help and it doesn't help the perception because immigration is a very important issue for everyone. It appears that you is now hoping to bring back some former soldiers who were previously fired for refusing the COVID vaccine. The move comes after the Department of Defense rolled back its vac vaccine mandate earlier this year, and as the military continues to struggle with recruiting. Now, the Army is now offering nearly 2,000 former soldiers a chance to return to service, issuing this memo that reads in part, quote, as a result of the rescission of all current COVID-19 vaccination requirements, former soldiers who were involuntarily separated, which is code for fired, for their refusal to receive the COVID-19 vaccination may request a correction of their military record. Well, first of all, when you look at all of the mandates, whether they were on like my children in their schools, uh, you know, various people in their jobs and certainly the military, these were decisions that were made by medical professionals when the situation was extremely fluid and people were panicked because they didn't want more people to die. These were decisions that were made in this country, made in, the other, in other countries as well. I, I do agree with Doug in giving specifics as to what does this mean for me if I come back. I think it's important to have the specifics. And I think it's important to let everybody who made the choice, for whatever their reason, not to be vaccinated, to come back to their positions, the military as well. But I, I can't just be, you know, hateful hindsight is 2020. Um, but I, I, I would agree that these are people who... Uh, volunteer and risk their lives. My dad was a Navy vet in the Korean War. A new report is revealing the shocking number of Americans now living paycheck to paycheck. The new survey from Lending Club found that 60% of all Americans are living on the edge financially. And that stat remains unchanged from the same time last year. So Americans are still struggling to pay their bills. But the White House, they are taking a victory lap this Thanksgiving because the price of your turkey dinner maybe slightly less than it was last year. However, and it's a big however, the average cost remains roughly 25% higher than it was before the pandemic. But White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre tried to convince us otherwise. As we start preparing our Thanksgiving meals, grocery inflation is at its lowest level in over two years, with prices for eggs, milks, bacon, and fresh veggies lower than last year. In fact, according to the American Farm Bureau, the cost of a Thanksgiving dinner fell this year. Prices are down for turkey, stuffing, peas, cranberries, pie crust, and whipping cream. We had a big discussion about whipping cream in the back. It's like, I don't know what whipping cream is. I know whipped cream, but not whipping cream. Anyway. Look at this, Leslie. This is the price of rent. And it's the price of mortgage. And you can see with the price of rent, when Biden takes office, 1,667 goes up to nearly 2,000 today. Mortgage, 1,621, now 2,371. I mean, this is people's paychecks, the thrust of their paychecks. 
<clears throat> if somebody is struggling, no matter what you say or do, no matter what the headline is, and we see that so whether a Democrat or Republican is in office, it'll be like, but economists say the economy is good, inflation is coming down, whatever is happening, how come it's not translating to the people and to the voters? And it eventually does. It does take time for you. You kept saying feeling. You were right on the money when you say feeling. There are some things with what you just asked. If we talk about rent, that has nothing to do with the politicians. That has to do with the greed of the developers who keep building more and more expensive buildings. I live in Los Angeles, you know, so sadly, uh, not everything can be blamed on President Biden, Democrats or Republicans. Um, OK, so a lot of you guys don't like small talk. And apparently, young Americans don't even know how to do it. The Wall Street Journal revealing colleges are now offering courses in small talk. Professors are teaching elementary chit-chat skills to students are, who are woefully behind in the basics. Now, the article points out theories like COVID cocooning, helicopter parents, and kids' addictions to smartphones for threatening to take to make small talk a lost language. In one case, a Caltech computer science lecturer was shocked to see that none of her fifth-year students were able to land an interview, let alone a job. So she, quote, asked to see copies of their cover letters. One began, hey, what's up, y'all? <laughs> the student explained that, well, someone said a cover letter should be friendly. Leslie, nothing gives me less confidence in the future than this. I would have hired that, hey, what's up, y'all? I, I like that. That's different. Um, I think this is a good idea, and this is why. Um, I have two teenagers, <laughs> and I do see the top of their head way too much, um, not just because of COVID, but my daughter will have her friend over, and they're sitting next to each other on their phones playing a game together, but look at each other, talk mm. to each other. You know, I am going to sound like the boomer now. Bring back <laughs> civics classes. Teach people how to balance a checkbook and a bank account. You know, I'm, I'm all in favor of this. Teach them how to write a cover letter. Teach them how, uh, interviewing skills. I think a lot of that's been lost, not just because of COVID, uh, but with different generations. And I, I'm sounding old, sorry. Not at all. You're sounding full of common He's sense. Taylor Swift's new boyfriend, Kansas City Chief star Travis Kelsey, is finally opening up about how he met the pop star. He tells the Wall Street Journal, obviously, I've never dated anyone with that kind of aura about them. I've never dealt with it, but at the same time, I'm not running away from any of it. The scrutiny she gets, how much she has, a magnifying glass on her every single day. When she acts like that, I better not be the one acting strange. But with Taylor on tour in Brazil, it wasn't going so well for him on the field last night. The all-pro tight end dropped a key pass and had a costly fumble as the Chiefs lost to his brother's Eagles. I love that. And one other thing I learned is that people were apparently like playing Cupid with her. They knew that he was interested in kind of matchmaked. Cute to learn when he was at the concert. They seem like a cute couple. They both want to get married. They both want to have children. They both seem to, you know, be at that age. But do you remember when Jessica Simpson dated? Was it Tony yes. uh, yeah. Romo? Romo, yes. sorry, not a big yeah. sports girl. And they would tell her to stay home because his team would lose <laughs> whenever she was there. It, it's always blaming the girl. Blame always blaming the girl. Exactly.